<laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So in our previous video, we converted acetosalicylic acid from aspirin tablets to salicylic acid through a uh, acid-based uh, hydrolysis reaction, in which we uh, hydrolyzed the acetosalicylic acid to salicylic acid, forming acetic acid in the process. The salicylic acid was crystallized out, and we were left with 50 grams. So, here is our 50 grams of um, salicylic acid, but I have two main applications for salicylic acid. I want to make some wintergreen so that we can make some smash gold crystals, and wintergreen is just methyl sal salicylate. Um, so, I'm actually going to put, put aside 20 grams. So, here's 15 here, and we'll take 5 out of here. The other 30, however, I would like to convert to phenol for a variety of other applications, such as making picric acid, which is nitrated phenol, and uh, I'd also like to attempt to make phenolphthalein, which is pH indicator. Anyhow, so we're going to weigh out 30 grams of this and begin. Now, to create phenol, it's actually quite simple, it's the decomposition of salicylic acid, which uh, forms phenol and carbon dioxide. It's a decarboxylation reaction. Anyhow, so this is actually not quite as easy as it sounds because salicylic acid slowly sublimates at temperatures above 78 degrees celsius i believe um, it's somewhere around 78 degrees celsius that it starts to sublimate so that means it goes directly from a solid to a gas so um, and it doesn't decompose until 220 degrees celsius i believe so if we're heating this up and it's slowly sublimating off then um, we're not going to be able to get pure phenol because we're going to have a lot of salicylic acid. So what I'm going to instead do is like uh, very heat this up very 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 hot um, with um, a camping stove or something in a metal apparatus. And what this is going to do is hopefully not not very much of our salicylic acid will sublimate and almost everything will decompose. The phenol, however, has a boiling point of about 180 degrees Celsius and will boil off recondense in our uh, receiving flask and we'll be left with a fair amount of phenol with a bit of salicylic acid um, contamination and some other contaminants and uh, from there we can redistill that and get some nice crystal clear pure phenol so I'll show you the apparatus I have in mind and um, how to make it okay so we'll run you through the apparatus quickly so basically we start with a paint can a small one and uh, poke a hole in the top now, uh, this is just a thermometer adapter where you normally insert your thermometer to monitor the temperature, but instead we're going to be inverting it and stick it in here. When sealed with Teflon, um, which melts quite a bit higher than the boiling point of phenol, um, it should create a nice airtight seal, um, and because it's quite chemically inert, it shouldn't react with anything. Um, this must be at an angle, however, because we're then going to be taking a separate adapter. Now, this is uh, for a distillation apparatus. You'd put your round bottom flask here, your condenser column here, and this little piece would normally go in the top as a thermometer adapter. However, what we're instead going to be doing is taking it and flipping it over and connecting it this way. And because it's at an angle, you can see now we have somewhere so that the phenol can hopefully flow down. And then we're going to be taking a small round bottom flask and simply putting it over here as a stopper type thing. I'll probably just use a 25 milliliter one. Anyhow, them this is, we don't need a condenser column because phenol is actually a solid at room temperature, which isn't very useful. Because a solid phenol product would not be very good in a condenser column because you clog your condenser column. So if we just have this short little um, condenser here, it should hopefully stay above the melting point of phenol uh, so that it will all drip into here. And then here's our receiving flask. So basically this is what the apparatus looks like. We heat it here, there's Teflon here, it goes uh, boils all the way over through here and collects over here. And then we'll have our uh, little stopper round bottom flask on top. Afterwards, when it's done, we could take off this, move it over here, and set up for a proper um, distillation. Uh, still a short path distillation, and just do this. So then we'll stick this in our uh, heating bath, heat this up, the phenol will boil over, and we'll recondense it and collect it over here. So um, that's basically how we're going to end up getting our phenol, hopefully nice and pure. So, enough of the talking, let's begin. Start by weighing out 30 grams of salicylic acid. Okay, so the apparatus has now all been set up, and you can see we just used a small 25 milliliter round bottom flask as a stopper at the top. And um, you don't need to install a thermometer here because the temperatures are just work, like we're not actually selectively distilling anything, we're just bringing everything over because uh, we're decomposing it. What we'll a thermometer and after to monitor the temperature when we're uh, specifically looking for just our phenol fraction. 
Anyhow, so uh, there's 30 grams of uh, salicylic acid in our jar here, and everything looks pretty good. And we got it taped up. And just make sure you put a metal cat clip here because this is obviously going to be the hottest part of the um, uh, whole apparatus because we're going to be applying quite a bit of heat right here. Anyhow, so I'll put this or bring this outside to our burner and um, we'll start heating this up to very high temperatures. Hopefully enough to decompose everything and um, hopefully we'll start distilling over some phenol. Um, one thing to keep in mind that would be good to have is either a heat gun or a fairly hot hair dryer because phenol, um, while it is a solid at room temperature, does melt at a relatively low um, temperature. So if we were to get some phenol build up in here or here and it started to clog our apparatus, we could uh, very easily take a heat gun or something and heat it up until it all melted so that we could continue with the distillation. Be very careful to uh, watch this little tube in here because that's pretty narrow and if it gets clogged, then uh, there's no other way for the gases to get out and we're going to have a big gas build up in here. This is why I left um, no keck clamp on the middle so that hopefully, instead of our glass or exploding, this joint will hopefully pop off. But um, we'll see what happens. Um, anyhow, so I'll go set this up outside and yeah. Okay, so we just finished. And it only took about 10 minutes to get through everything, which is quite quick. Now, you're going to probably be wondering why it's all red. And this is because I used Play-Doh as our sealer, because I didn't actually add enough Teflon tape. Make sure you add a copious amount, because I had a couple little air gaps and the phenol vapors were escaping, which isn't very good. Anyhow, no issue, I added some Play-Doh, but then red things started to come over because of the dye in the Play-Doh, and also the smell in the Play-Doh was distilling over. Anyhow, that's also not very good. So, if you are going to use Play-Doh, use white Play-Doh, so you don't contaminate your product with dye as much. But um, we're going to be doing another distillation, however, or anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So, in our receiving flask here, we have some really nice white phenol, which is uh, crystallized out. But we also have this goopy, watery dye layer, um, which is, this is just a mess in here. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead, take apart the rest of this apparatus, we'll clean up our glass for a bit, and then we're going to set up for just a normal distillation. Uh, once again, a short path distillation, but this time we'll be able to remove the water, hopefully remove the dye, and then be left with a nice pure phenol product. And I'll also open up the can, show you what's inside, and we'll see what's inside of there. Anyhow, so let this cool down, and meet you back inside. Okay, so we've set up our next apparatus, once again, without a water condenser, because the phenol will freeze in our condenser, which won't be good. So, I simply have it right here, and um, we're going to be putting it in an oil bath. But instead of my usual oil bath, we'll just be using this uh, um, tin can as our oil bath, because uh, it fits a 100 milliliter round bottom flask much easier. Our collecting flask right now is a 50 milliliter one, and all the water will come over first and go into there. Then we'll swap it out for a small 25 milliliter round bottom flask, so we can uh, collect the rest of our phenol product. I'm hoping that most of the dye isn't going to end up coming over in the water, um, part of it, and hopefully that none of it is going to contaminate our end phenol product. Um, or perhaps the dye on its own will come over in a separate fraction. Not totally sure what will happen, but we'll see. Now, um, I'm going to try to get all the water off first, but um, if that doesn't work, we may actually um, lower the pressure in here by hooking it up to a vacuum pump, and um, th by doing this, it will just lower the boiling point of phenol, and um, yeah, that might help things out. I'm not totally sure. Um, I'll, I might play around with it. We'll just see what happens. Anyhow, so uh, yeah, I'll fill this up with oil, take it outside, and we'll begin the distillation. Okay, so my hot plate wasn't quite hot enough to reach 180 degrees Celsius, but this oil bath on my camping stove is totally fine. So um, there's a bit of a story that just happened a moment ago. Um, so I originally installed a thermometer in the oil bath. But um, what happened was it got above 200 degrees Celsius, and that's all these thermometers go up to. And never let your um, thermometer go above what it's rated for because a catastrophic explosion occurred and the whole bottom of it just blew apart the whole bottom of the thermometer. Thankfully, I have two others, so it's not too bad of a thing. But um, anyhow, yeah. So currently, the temperature on the uh, still head thermometer is at 180 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of phenol. And we can see things uh, condensing in our condenser column, or not column, but short little thing. And um, there is a few drops of phenol which have actually come over. And in the 50 milliliter round bottom flask, we did get a bit of water and some other oil that came over first. And uh, that was on the um, hot plate, so that all boiled at a relatively low temperature, probably around 120 degrees, I'm assuming. 
And um, basically, we're collecting a pure phenol now. So um, as long as that stays at that temperature, it should be good. So uh, I guess we'll continue to distill our phenol until it rises above 180 degrees Celsius, at which point we should, of course, uh, immediately remove this from heat to avoid it going above 200 and also exploding this thermometer. So I'll collect all the th phenol and meet you back. Okay, so after we're done with the, that, all that outside, um, here's our two flasks. So here's the um, uh, flask that we started with, with all that icky stuff in it, and we have some really thick um, syrup-like, uh, but even more viscous than syrup, um, uh, leftover stuff here, which is red and smells pretty bad. Uh, it smells like burnt Play-Doh. Anyhow, so I'll dispose of that. And then in the receiving flask, we actually got a fair amount of phenol. I'm guessing like probably 12 or 13 milliliters there. Uh, not sure the exact weight of it yet, but we'll weigh that in a moment. And of course right now it's a solid because it's cooled down, but um, we should be able to uh, melt this and uh, break it up into some chunks, put it in a separate container and weigh it. Um, anyhow, also with that thermometer that I accidentally broke, we'll just be able to use that as a glass rod because you might as well use it instead of throwing it out. Um, anyhow, yeah. So, um, I really, 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 um, enjoyed having that oil bath heated by a flame. It heated up so quickly, and the distillation was done in 10 or 15 minutes. It went incredibly quick, and, um, had excellent separation. It stayed at about 180 degrees Celsius nearly the entire time, and, um, whatever this stuff is, uh, it started to, uh, I watched it start to climb up the condenser, so, um, I immediately pulled it out of the oil bath, turned off the heating, and pulled off, um, our receiving flask so that none of this ugly stuff came over, because I really didn't want our product getting contaminated. Anyhow, so break this up, put it in a separate container, and we'll wait and see exactly how much we got and calculate a percent yield. So, our final amount isn't amazing, it is 10 grams, and I just heated it up and transferred it to this bottle, so it's not actually, um, solid yet. But, uh, 10 grams is, I mean, it's not too bad, but it's, um, it, it corresponds to a yield of about 49%. So not amazing, but not terrible either. Anyhow, so that's basically how to decarboxylate salicylic acid to form phenol. And we're going to be using this phenol in a future video to make phenolthaline, and hopefully also picric acid. Although 10 grams isn't a lot to work with, so, um, I might have to go out and make some more, we'll see. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future video. Wait! Bye.